This is the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. And in this video, I'm gonna show you everything that's new about this gimbal and also just why you would wanna use a gimbal like this for your smartphone. All right, let's get into it. So all of that footage was shot using this setup. And you can see how smooth the footage is when you're using this little gimbal. Now I know that smartphones have gotten super advanced with the stabilization that's built into the phone itself. However, when you're using a gimbal, you can get even smoother footage. And one of the big things that a gimbal does is it keeps your horizon completely level no matter how you're shooting. So what that means is when you're looking out in the distance, your horizon is always gonna be a flat line. It'll never dip one way or another. And so this is a level of stabilization that you can't achieve by just hand holding a phone. You can get close, however, the gimbal does add a second layer of stabilization that really makes your footage look that much better. So let me just show you some samples side by side. This is handheld with my iPhone 13 alongside the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. And I just wanna show you the difference between hand holding and actually using a gimbal and what it looks like. Now, one huge advantage that a gimbal has is when you push into your longer lenses, you can still have super stable footage. It's a lot harder to get these smooth shots on the long lens when you're hand holding the camera. And another big thing is it's just easier to use this gimbal. Right now I'm operating it with just one hand and I can always get stable shots. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put both hands on my smartphone to be able to get those stable shots. But using a gimbal allows you to just use one arm operation and you know that you're always gonna get super stable footage. Now let me show you real quick how easy it is to use this gimbal. So it's just in my pocket and it's turned off. Now I just open it up, it turns on the gimbal and then I use the little magnet that comes with this gimbal that goes on my phone you just attach it, line up the dots, and then the gimbal automatically resets and gets ready to go. And you can even have it set up to where the Mimo app automatically activates as soon as you turn on the gimbal and it's connected. So you don't have to worry about like pressing and holding a button to turn on or off this gimbal. And also the magnet makes it super easy to be able to pop it on and off. And as soon as you take this off, the gimbal's not gonna freak out or anything like that. You just close it down and the gimbal turns off put it in your pocket, and then that's it. So you don't have to worry about turning the gimbal on or off, you just open or close it, and it automatically does everything for you. Now one of the huge advantages with using the DJI Osmo Mobile 6 is you have a selfie stick built in. So if you are someone who does vlog style content, well, you could extend this out away from yourself, and now you're gonna get a much better shot with that front-facing camera than you would if you were just hand-holding the camera. All right, so let's start doing a vlog-style shot. And you can see I just put it on the extension pole, and now I'm walking around and able to get this good shot of myself. No matter where I'm at, it actually looks much more natural when I'm shooting like this because my hand can be lower, and you're getting just an upper shot of me doing this style of a shot. So when it comes to working with your smartphone to create your videos, the gimbal is just gonna give you a lot more creative control over your image and allow you to just do a lot different styles of shots. And the extra bit of stabilization that you get from the horizon always being balanced is gonna just make your shots stand out. Now DJI has upgraded a lot of the features on the Osmo Mobile 6 and let's go sit down and go over everything that's new with this gimbal and how it works. So the big thing when it comes to this style of gimbal is simplicity. It's easy to use, but everything you need is right here on the gimbal or within the app. So I'm just showing you a screen record here so you could see what's going on in the app. And then I'm gonna talk about all the different buttons that you have access to when you're working with the DJI Osmo Mobile 6. On the bottom, you have this tripod that you can remove. So you don't have to use this if you don't want to, but what this allows you to do is set it down 
on like a table or the ground or wherever you're at. Easily, you could just set it up at any point and then you could do something like a time lapse or you could do a shot like you're walking in the distance or whatever. This is just an easy way to set this camera down and then you have a good shot wherever you're at. And with the extension pole, well, you can have a taller shot so that the camera is not always on the ground. A lot of times if you're trying to make videos and you're just using your phone, you have like a little tripod or you just like set it on a rock or something, well, you're always gonna have the shot where it's kind of like looking up. So this does give you a little bit more flexibility when it comes to working with this gimbal and giving you different types of shots. On the gimbal itself, you have a few buttons here on the front. In the upper right hand corner, you have a mode button and the motors will lock depending on which mode that you have it in. And by default, you're in the mode that's follow all, which basically means that all the motors are going to be moving, nothing is locked. So if you tilt the gimbal down, the camera's gonna move down with you. And if you move to the left or right, the camera's gonna move left or right with you. The motor's gonna follow whatever your action is. Now the next mode you could switch into is tilt lock mode. And so this basically means that any tilting action is gonna be locked. So if your camera's looking out that way and you move your hand up or down, well, the camera is gonna stay looking that way. However, if you rotate left or right, the camera's gonna follow. Now, the next mode you have access to is the same as the follow all, however, it also rotates. So if I spin, the camera's gonna spin with me. It's also gonna follow down and it's also gonna follow up or left or right. And then the last mode is spin shot. So if I move left or right on the joystick, it's gonna spin in a circle. So you can create those shots where it's kind of like spinning through space left or right. So you could be like walking forward and have the camera spinning. It's an interesting shot and you might have some use for it. Most of the time I just shoot with tilt lock or follow all because I'm just trying to keep the horizon level and I want that super stable looking footage. Now it's super easy to switch between all these modes. You just press the mode button and it cycles through all four modes. Now also on the front of this gimbal, you have your record button. So this is gonna take a photo or start your recording. It's just easy, it's right where your thumb is so you never actually have to touch the camera when you wanna start or stop recording. Now underneath that you have a button that has these two arrows and it does three different actions. So if you just press it once, you can see there's my camera there and then it's gonna flip to me. Now it's gonna be following me as I do this kind of vlog style shot. Press it once again, it's gonna flip back over to there to you and the camera that's over there. Now if I double press it, it's gonna go from horizontal mode to vertical mode. So depending on the style of content that you're shooting, you might be shooting more vertical or horizontal or both and this is just a quick way to flip between them. And then if you triple click this button, it's gonna go to photo mode. So you can take a photo, triple click it again, and it's gonna go back to video mode. So easily with the buttons on this gimbal, you can access a lot of the different modes and a lot of the settings without actually touching the app at all. Now you also have a joystick and this joystick just moves the camera wherever you point the joystick. And the cool thing about this joystick is you could set how responsive it is. So if you wanna use some moving shots in your footage, well you could set this to super slow and it's gonna really creep through the shot and give you some good looking footage. But if you just wanna use it to reframe, you could set it to faster and you could just get to wherever you need to go with the joystick super fast. Now on the side of this gimbal, you have a zoom and focus wheel. So as I spin this, you can see that I'm slowly zooming in and I'm slowly zooming out. Now what I could do is just click on it. So press down on this jog wheel and now I've switched over to manual focus. So I could go close focus or far focus. So if you wanna just take control of your focus and you don't want it to be auto, well, this is a great way to do it and then you can easily set your focus to the point at which you need something to be in focus. You could also do some cool things like rack focus where you're close on something and then it focuses to something in the distance and you could do that all manually using this dial wheel. And the last button that you have on this gimbal is this trigger on the back. You could double click this, it's gonna recenter the gimbal. However, if you press once, it's gonna set up your active track and then it's gonna start tracking whatever's in the center. Click it once again, it's gonna stop that tracking. And this trigger also works the same way when the camera's facing you. So if I switch the mode by pressing the two arrows, it's now gonna auto track me because that's by default what happens. But I click it once, it's gonna stop tracking me. So you could use this trigger to start and stop the tracking when you're in either mode. With the buttons that you have access to on the gimbal itself, you really don't have to use the app that much. However, let me show you what you get with the DJI MIMO app. So as you can see here, the camera's facing me on the gimbal. On the left-hand side over here, you have auto and manual settings. So you could click this and you could switch 
your different modes. So right now I'm in auto, this is auto exposure. But if I wanted to go over to manual, I could set my ISO, I could set my shutter speed, or I could set my exposure value, which is gonna change where the camera thinks best exposure is. I'm gonna go back to auto so that it looks better. And then underneath that, you could change all of your settings for your resolution, your frame rate. And when you're in photo mode, this is where your timer is gonna be. So you could set up a timer if you wanna do, set the camera down, hit the button, and then walk away from it and get a shot. Let's go back to video. Now underneath that over here, you have this button that's supposed to make your face look better. It's like a beauty filter. So let's turn that on and make myself look pretty. So we have auto, so it's gonna smoothen out my skin and I guess it's also gonna slim your face a little bit. So let's really slim the face and let's really smoothen out my skin. That's obviously pushing it too far, but you could use this to just do a little bit of tweaks to your face to make it a little smoother, a little bit slimmer, a little bit better on camera, depending on the shot that you have. I'm gonna turn that off. Maybe I should keep it on. But down here in the corner, you have these three little dots. This is like your menu. And this is where you could change things like your gimbal mode. You can calibrate your gimbal, but then also you could set things like your joystick speed and joystick control. I want my joystick to be slow because I wanna use my joystick to get some smooth creeping shots of the pretty landscape that I'm at. So you have a ton of options in your menu to take control of your gimbal and dial in the settings that you need for the style of shooting that you do. Now on the screen itself, at the bottom, you see all of your camera settings. I'm in auto, so they're fluctuating depending on what's going on behind me. You have your record button, the big red button here on the side. You have your camera button that's gonna flip from in front of camera to behind camera. You see all of your battery levels up here at the top. And then you have this little hand thing, which is a gesture control. And so you could set this up so to do like a gesture and then it's gonna start shooting. So I just put my hand up, now it's recording using the gesture controls. Super useful because you could have this camera set up at a distance, put my hand up, and it's gonna start controlling. So now I'm recording, I don't have to be near the camera, walking away, it's gonna track me. Now, the cool thing with this gimbal is that you could set this up with your DJI mic. Just put it on the phone here, and then you could use wireless audio. And this is how I do a lot of my videos, is I use the DJI mic to get wireless audio so I can walk away from camera. Gesture control has follow and shoot and shoot only. So if you have follow and shoot turned on, what happens is when you turn it on and you do the little motion, it's gonna start following you as soon as it starts recording but you could also have this set up to shoot only so that you don't have the active track turning on. And that's good if you just want a shot where it's just like a wide tripod style shot and you don't want the camera to follow you. All right, let's go back here. So on the side, you have your different modes. Right now I'm in video mode. You can go to photo mode. You can go to panoramic. You could do a time-lapse. You could do a hyperlapse. You can do a dynamic zoom, which is like a push in with a pull out and it creates that really interesting stretching effect. And then you have your slow motion mode. So a lot of different modes just easily accessible here in the DJI MIMO app. But beyond just all the different modes that you have access to in the app and on the gimbal itself, you also have this thing called Shot Guide, which is pretty cool. It's in the upper left-hand corner here. So when you turn this on, you have access to a lot of these different predetermined shot lists, which will walk you through the process of shooting different styles of shots that will create a good looking scene. So if you don't know how you wanna shoot, say, this park, well, you can go into the shot guide and you could find like a lazy afternoon or a night walk or a town tour or a street dance. And each one of these is gonna have an entire shot list so that you could see exactly what you need to shoot to be able to create this sequence. This one's called Lazy Afternoon and it goes through all the different shots that you need to be able to create the sequence. And then so when you scroll down, it shows all of the shots. So let's do a low angle leave shot. And it's gonna show you on the left hand side when it goes back to the camera screen, how to actually get this shot. So it sets up the gimbal in the mode that you need to achieve this shot. Then it shows you a behind the scenes of how the person is shooting it and what the final shot looks like. So let's make this shot right here. So I'm gonna find my shot, I'm gonna hit record and then I'm gonna do the same action that they're doing. And they'll show you side by side what the shot is supposed to look like and what yours looks like. And you could either retake or you could use it and go to the next shot. 
So if you're newer to making videos or you just want some inspiration, these different shot guides are gonna give you a lot of different interesting ideas when you're out filming. Between the Mimo app and the gimbal, there is a lot of different options, but at the same time, it's not very complicated, so it's really easy to use this gimbal. Overall, I think a gimbal is a great idea if you are a smartphone creator. I use gimbals with everything that I do because it just gives you that added layer of stabilization that's really gonna make your shot stand out. Now, if you wanna see more information about the DJI Osmo Mobile 6, I'll include a link down below in the description. But next, you should check out this video right here, which goes through a ton of information on how you're gonna be able to craft better videos when you're out shooting with your gimbal. I'll see you over there.